us in these few, on these couple, no, few, these few different realities, three. I do have a mic, Becca, but the mic is for the podcast. So I'm just speaking into my headphones. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. This is trippy. (laughs) This is really trippy because you are, I mean, as like current as I guess you can be on the computer, on the podcast, but you were a little delayed for a second on the Instagram live. Mm. Did you just hit something that made you like raise up a little bit? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, <was gonna> say. <laughs> I realized that the, 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 the direction I was like looking up at like, it was mm-hmm. like I was looking at the eclipse, you know, and it just wasn't working out. We needed to, we needed to adjust. So we're adjusted. We now have decent height so that I can like see you all visually. This one's a little different. As Rue was saying, as people were logging in and uh, folks were listening to the podcast, we're recording both the podcast episode and Instagram live at the same time. This is a new little technolo- technological feat, and we are finding a way to make it work, make it happen. And we got folks on the computer uh, or here in the interwebs. Rue and I are on the computer here on the interwebs, and we got folks here on the IG live. And so we got two screens, and we're figuring out a way to make it happen. So happy Monday musing, y'all. It's good to see you. Welcome. How you doing, Rue? I'm good. There's like, it looks like there's someone requesting to to join. It's weird. This thing's going in and out. Oh yeah, someone is requesting to join. Lauren, maybe maybe later. Lauren Mohar looks like she's requesting to join the live. The live. Um, Maybe a little later in the call, Lauren. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some stuff first. So. If there's something, you know, you're it's dying to or, or wanting to be lived through you, you know, stick around um, and maybe we can invite some people on a little later. But we got it. We got some things we want to talk about right now. Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, I uh, had a busy weekend, man. It was my birthday was last weekend, but me and the lady did a joint birthday party this weekend and it was a lot of fun but a lot of work and uh not that much sleep Mm. so was just you know coming coming out of that still coming out of that and then we're going to new orleans on wednesday um so it's it yeah i am getting older becca (laughs) i am getting older but i'm telling everyone that i'm 11 (laughs) um forever ever and you're also nocturnal becca so that's 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 totally like that's that's you like i'm i am not team no sleep i am very much team sleep um so yeah so that was what i came into the week with and then obviously the you know there's the big solar eclipse and went to a solar eclipse party with, with uh kt and her mom and my mom and then her mom's like uh, friend, and then our two dogs, and then uh, dropped one of my friend, uh, Darius. You know Darius, mm-hmm. so dropped something that he left at the party off at his place, and um, yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> going at it, you going at yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, you know that life. You got two kids under eight. Mm-hmm. with a full-time job and you're married so yeah you got you're always busy this is just a weekend for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your life <laughs> always busy always busy bro always busy well happy birthday man i'm hoping i'm hope you had a hope you had a wonderful time celebrating uh hope you had fun doing the lunar eclipse or the, the solar eclipse party becca we see you in the chat um the eclipse the next one in the northern hemisphere i don't know what year it is but apparently the path of totality passes through um god what is it through iceland so i imagine that you know the uk must get something some kind of eclipse action going on in the next whenever the next one is sometime in the next several years i don't know exactly when that is but you'll see it becca um but yeah man that's awesome it's a it's a beautiful way to celebrate um you know, with people that you love and enjoying the pups and 
just playing and exploring, man, doing what you do best. It's a beautiful thing. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. How was the eclipse for you? And did you get a chance to see it? What was the path for you? Oh yeah. 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 It was, um, we, I think in DC we saw, well, we were technically in Maryland. We got 90%. Whoa, let's go. Yeah. 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 No, it was, we got, it was 89% and we got, um, it was a relatively clear day. There was some clouds, but you know, it was pretty clear. So when the eclipse was on, we could see it and you could feel the temperature shift. Um, it got a little uh, darker, not like super dark, but it definitely got like, I think it was happening around three o'clock and definitely felt more like dusk. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but besides the temperature, the coolest thing was the animals. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. animals got really quiet and there were no birds flying overhead. And then when it ended or as it was ending, birds started flying back overhead, chirping started up again. Um, our domesticated animals, her dog was a little more chill, but like my dog was, she's kind of always riled up. I don't, I don't know if it was affecting her, even though her name is Luna, but, um, the wild animals, they were like, you could feel there was a difference. Mm. So that was, and what was great was, you know, like, I know a lot of people have been going to different places where like, it's more along the path of the eclipse and so you can see the total um eclipse we were just in her backyard um 18 minute drive um had a charcuterie board (laughs) Mm -hmm. we were chilling like we were we were really chilling and we saw a pretty pretty amazing experience that i'm definitely never gonna forget so and what's also really cool is that she she's the ceo of a company and she um Had the company take the day off. Dope. Dope. I love that. Yeah. Boss. Boss moves. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I kept I kept thinking about Apocalypto like the whole day. Like it just kept popping up for me. Apocalypto the whole day. I kept thinking about that scene and considering what it would be like if I didn't quite have NASA and all these other institutions telling me what was happening in the sky, right? If I didn't Google what was happening in the sky, how would I respond to that? And, you know, in that scene in Apocalypto where, you know, they're, the whole village is, is ransacked and they, you know, they steal people, bring them to the main city and they start selling them off into slavery and a whole variety of things. And there's one person, you know, or the main character is about to be sacrificed and the the total uh, solar eclipse happens right there in that moment, right? Right before the uh, the shaman takes his life and the whole city stops. Like every, they're all chanting, they're cheering, they're shouting. There's just, it's, it's mayhem, right? There's blood everywhere. It's mayhem. And then the eclipse happens and everyone stops and looks up at the sky like, what is happening, right? What is happening? And of course, the shaman in that moment is like trying to find a way to make sense of it. So, of course, he's like, God has answered our prayers. <laughs> God has answered our prayers. Our prayers have been answered. The drought is over. All of our sacrifices have made a difference, right? Like he made us made sense of it. But like, I think that moment is so beautiful in that like it captures that essence of of, of sense making creatures, right? Like the idea that there was so much happening around us in so many ways, whether it's celestial, whether it's here on our earth, whether it's the animals, whether it's in our bodies, our experiences, our emotions. At the end of the day, everything that we are attempting to make sense of is completely rooted in uncertainty. We just attempt to make sense of it and apply some kind of narrative to it in order for us to feel some sense of comfort in that experience, right? And so as you're describing, right, the animals, and I had a conversation with someone today as well who was saying, you know, they were watching CNN and the birds, like, they stopped chirping and they went back to their nests and they started nesting again to get ready for sleep and all these things. And it's almost as if, like, well, if it's dark, it must be time for bed, right? 
and that that biological response to that is well if it's dark that's what i that's what i got to do now it's time for bed right and that that story isn't necessarily conscious it's just more or less the biological drivers that are influencing and informing how these animals show up at least i can say in theory i don't i don't know i don't speak animal i don't have an understanding of the consciousness of an animal and what they believe but i think that it's a fascinating idea to think about how there are some people who don't even who didn't even know right today was a was a was an eclipse right and there are some people who care so much that they took took work off and drove or flew or did whatever they needed to do to get there and there are some people who believed in it and were so excited about it that they literally threw a festival in texas so that they could just experience and celebrate it right so it's like the range of possible responses to this phenomenon that we can't even make sense of truly we have no idea what actually is happening no real concept of what is actually happening but we try to make sense of it and we all respond in some capacity or another based on our own personal preferences belief systems desire and access and ability to move freely right which i thought was just a really fascinating thing to think about and tying it into apocalypto was just a really interesting perspective just to kind of like contemplate like what how would i respond to this natural phenomenon in the sky if i did not have access to the internet and all these other people on the planet telling me what it was how would i actually respond to that actually right <laughs> it's a wild thought you know <laughs> like what would i what would i do i would i would what would i actually do right as opposed to being excited i literally ran i literally ran out the door like i'm in my office i ran out the door <laughs> ran outside started yelling the, the eclipse is happening it's happening and you know my son's home from school for spring break my daughter is 14 months old she's like what are you yelling about daddy and my wife is on the phone talking to somebody she has no, like nobody is like too just like paying attention in the way that i am and i'm running up the stairs and i'm yelling and i'm shouting and i'm screaming like a three-year-old boy pumped pumped that this is that the, this eclipse is happening and i run upstairs and i'm like where are the glasses where are the glasses somebody where are the glasses they're like oh i'm like quill you got the glasses from the library where'd you put him he's like i don't know I'm... so i run up in the car and i start going through all the stuff in the car because you know he's seven he leaves stuff in the car it just happens brother There's always stuff in the car that he leaves in the car so i'm going through his books i'm going through his papers i'm looking at his shoes I'm like where is these glasses I find the glasses i run back downstairs i pop them on my head and i'm like yo what am i seeing mm. what is this what is this and it was in that moment when i was like oh my god what is this that everybody converged like i want to see i want to see let me see too I don't, I don't, I don't. right and i say all that to say mm. like my response to it and my excitement for it was only because i had some understanding of what was happening based on information i was gathering from other people I'm not an I'm not an astronomer. I'm not an astrophysicist. I don't actually understand the concepts. I can't even tell you the difference between a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. I might be able to, but like, like actually, I can't really break it down for you, right? But I was so excited about it because it was like this mysterious thing that I knew was happening, and I understood to enough degree for me to not be afraid of it to the point where I could be curious about it, right? And I promise you, there's a there's a piece in this that we're gonna tease out right which is this concept of when we step into moments of uncertainty when we experience intense fear oftentimes it's because we don't know what's going to happen next and we are terrified of that thing that might happen that may leave us wounded hurt dead lonely etc but if we are able to step in moments of uncertainty that could otherwise be fear driven in some way shape or form with some level of curiosity it changes the whole experience. We start to play. We start to explore, we start to dance, we start to run upstairs and gather other people and just be excited and then revel in the excitement so that we can all be uncertain together, but exploring and playing in the process. Becca, the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse is that a solar eclipse is when the moon goes in front of the sun and you know, in our visual path of, you know, sun then moon then earth and a lunar eclipse is the opposite where the sun goes in front of the moon and then we have no that's not true <laughs> the sun the earth and the moon right that's what happens i don't know no now i'm all twisted up <laughs> i think no i think I, I i think you're i think you had it i think 
like today was a solar eclipse and so today the moon was in front of the sun so it was earth moon sun so i guess in a lunar eclipse it's earth sun moon um i don't know how the sun blocks out the moon but <clears throat> like you said we're not astrophysicists <laughs> we're just two dudes <laughs> we scratch our balls and I like to clean our plates <laughs> when we eat <laughs> and drink good water. And, you know, we don't know, Becca. Ask Google. Google will tell you. Google will give or you the chat right Or GBT or Siri or one of them. But we're not, we're not high enough on the pay grade. That's above our pay grade. <laughs> um, but, I, I mean, that's what I think was happening today was the moon was going in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I, I thought that. But, yeah, that's a crazy... <laughs> that's why i was laughing so hard because i was like yeah if i didn't know that would be that would be terrifying mm -hmm. and it actually made me think you know it's like we are in the time of google and that all this information so you can look up and find really whatever you want to read pretty much you can find whatever you want to hear and so there was a, a dude who i just like had a very casual conversation in passing with on my way to get a donut and some coffee, I thought he was, I thought he had gotten a donut and coffee, but in his bag was actually some weed. And so I was like, what, 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 what type did you get? Cause I thought, cause they were about to close. It closes early. And he was like, huh? And I'm like the donut. And he was like, oh, nah, slim. He was like, this gas, slim, this gas. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, he was like, well, you know, he's like, shit, I'm probably going to want a donut after this. <laughs> 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 so I went and I, I got the donut and I came out and he was still there and then he was like oh I see you got your donut and he was like hey man I was like yeah and he was like hey man you know like I've been telling everyone like you know this eclipse like keep praying keep saying your prayers and I was like bro I've been saying them since I woke up and he was like yeah it's crazy to think like this may <laughs> I'm laughing <laughs> but it's just it's crazy to think like this may be the last time we see the sun for like a minute <laughs> And I was just like, yeah, you know, like I was like, absorb it, you know, like literally like soak it up. No pun intended. Um, it, it was a chocolate glazed donut, Becca. There you go. <laughs> a chocolate glazed donut. Chocolate, chocolate glazed donut. But um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I thought it was it was it was funny, but it was also like. You know, because like we don't see the sun, I think we're going to die, mm -hmm. right? We'll freeze. Mm -hmm. But it was also like, yeah, I mean, like, it was funny. But then in one way, it was also like, yeah, there's definitely information out here saying all kinds of stuff, you know, like three days of darkness and maybe no more light for even longer, all that stuff. I don't know what he was reading or listening to. But then just talking to you um, about this whole idea of, yeah, if I didn't know this was happening, what would I think? And I think, yeah, I mean, I, I from the little that I've read about what um, indigenous communities have considered eclipses to be, I, I think it's kind of an ominous sign. Like it's more of a an ominous omen. Mm -hmm. And I get that, mm -hmm. you know, whether that's true or not, um, you know, I don't know. I haven't done enough research, but me individually, if I did not have the information, at my disposal like we do now and i saw that this thing happening it would be scary but so here's my question that i'm not just realizing so i couldn't you couldn't see the eclipse without these glasses mm -mm. so it definitely got a little cooler and a little darker and the animals got quiet but if i had just looked up at the sky which i did without the glasses like i wouldn't have been able to tell there was an eclipse Mm -hmm. so now, now i'm also thinking about that it's like okay if like how are you seeing it mm. what, 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 you know because again like we have access to the information we have access to this technology that have created this product that you know we can put these glasses on and see it safely um and enjoy it but like i definitely took the glasses off throughout that experience and I wouldn't have been able to tell that there was anything going on. Mm. 
other than it being darker and a little cooler. Yeah, it wasn't. I guess for whatever reason, I I thought it was going to be. Again, I didn't read anything on this, but I I guess I thought it was going to be a little more visible to the naked eye. Mm. Um. So yeah, I don't know. Like, I wonder how people. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a. Um, I'm not a. Um, who are the people that study people? An anthropologist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not an anthropologist. So maybe they had their own technologies. Mm. I would imagine so. I think Becca mentioned something about like poking holes in a piece of paper, and then. Being oh yes, 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 yes. So yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So her neighbors did come over. I'm so dumb. <laughs> Her neighbors did come over <laughs> and they had a colander mm-hmm. and cause it was funny cause they felt dumb cause we had these glasses, but no, it's probably the more like the way that it was done. So the way they could see it, you're absolutely right. Is what would have been circular shadows through the colander. You could see the reflection that way. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I'm I pretty sure it was a movie and not just my imagination from like listening to something, but I'm pretty sure it was a movie that was talking about how like it was just showing how like people in some in one civil shit, maybe this was during some of my like my travel. It may have been in Mexico City, actually, maybe. But again, I don't know shit. I'm a dumbass. That's not um, true. In in this aspect, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. There's so many pieces of information that this is gonna come from. Do not quote me. I am a I am a monkey right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um they had the, the 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 you were able to see how the sun circulated through something they had set up in essentially like a little pond like Mm. in a reflecting pool. Mm. And so you could see the way they had something that was essentially like a hand on a clock, Mm. but the reflection was in the water. It was like through the water um, that they could tell. Yeah. Maybe that was from Apocalypto. I don't, I don't even know, but there's so many ways. You're right. You use the shadows. Yeah. (laughs) I wonder uh if if it was a hundred percent obscurity i know that you had like 89 percent, but i wonder if there would have been a different if it would have been more dramatic in texas i i don't know if anybody here is on the call that actually saw 100 percent, but if it was a hundred percent obscure if it would be more dramatic in that way where the sun is virtually gone except for a ring in the sky and i'm pretty sure and I got this from a dude that works at NASA. So maybe it's true. I can't confirm the resource. I can't confirm the source. But I think he said that once it's completely obscure at 100%, you don't need the glasses anymore. And that you can actually see it when it's 100% obscured. Now, somebody Google it, confirm that, tell me I'm wrong, whatever. But this is what I, I think is true. And so if you're in a situation where like you are, you know, ignorant and i don't mean that in a negative way i just mean ignorant in the in what's happening in the sky right you don't know what's happening in the sky and you look up and the sun is completely blotted out except for a ring of fire like (laughs) (laughs) okay i see what you're doing yeah yeah like that 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 would be wild and i i'm i'm pretty sure that it's possible for you to be able to see it once it's fully blotted out that way that you only need the glasses when the sun is partially uh, exposed because the photons and the in the you know cornea and all the things but once it's completely obscure i think it blocks it enough for you to be able to look at it with a naked eye naked eye and then it's just a ring of fire which i can imagine also looks dope like scary if you don't know what's happening and you're like why is the sky doing this but like probably really dope to see because i imagine you could probably even tell like the sun flares and things that are coming off the, the sun in that way like some kind of pulse of the hydrogen bomb that's in the sky like you know it, it's got to be wild i've never seen it myself i've seen pictures of it but i've never seen it myself here we go 
We got Becca. The only time it is safe to look without protection is during totality, which only some locations experience. Source, Google. Shout out to Becca. Thank you. Shout out to Becca. Shout out to Google. And you're absolutely right. That would have been it. And that would have been freaky as fuck. Especially, I mean, whether you got the omen, if you got the update or not, how long is this going to last? You know, just, but this, this, this is what I'll say is it was so interesting to see that in this modern context, because we are so disconnected mm. from nature and like literally seeing nature take a, a whole break, a whole break mm -hmm. um, during that moment and how I know there were millions of people, billions of people that are just continuing on with whatever needed to be done. And we would have been those people if, you know, a, an executive decision hadn't been made and we decided to have, or we agreed to have this, um, this like mi literally a midday solar eclipse um, gathering, which was, which was beautiful. Mm. Um, and it just, it was like a very poignant moment of, I don't want to say reflection, but just like kind of a, <laughs> even though it was an eclipse, it shown some light on how we, um, <laughs> we, um, <laughs> we're really, we're just so caught up in, in the, the flow of the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally. And I'm like, man, this is really what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what's really going on. And I found myself looking at my phone, looking at Instagram, looking at it, you know, just like going through all the different, again, the different realities. Um, there's so many realities we operate in. It's so weird. Like mm -hmm. I'm there in that moment with my family and then I'm looking at Instagram and because I'm just addicted. And then I'm looking at my phone for messages because I'm addicted. And then I'm looking at my email because I'm addicted. And um, it, so you got like four different realities there. Mm -hmm. And the only one that I really should have been with was the one that was right in front of me. Mm. You know, and there was so much sensory information in there. And I was I was getting as much of it as I could, um, but also realizing how much I am, you know, addicted and a, and a slave to these these technologies and these devices. But that was that was the biggest thing for me was just one. Yo, like okay, the eclipse is amazing, but the, the literally the fact that the sun comes up every day mm -hmm. is e even more amazing because without it we'd fucking die. So that in itself like my mom just made a joke about it but i'm like yeah that we should be celebrating every day that in itself is cause for celebration literally mm -hmm. literally um every inhale you take and exhale you make that is cause for celebration um these are literally literally the things that keep us alive and the market and money and stress and you know what we think we need to do gets in the way of that and then it's not until it's too late honestly or maybe it's right on time but it's not until we're dying um mm. that we're like oh shit yeah let me just take a moment to do something that i did as a kid that i haven't done in 45 years mm. you know mm -hmm. let me just like listen to a song or like look at a view or whatever it may be and that's really tragic that's really tragic, especially I know I think life expectancy has gone down, but like with people living as long as we do now, okay, do you want a life, a long life that is kind of full of all the things that you're told you're supposed to get? And then at the end or towards the latter half, you kind of have your awakening and then do what you want, blah, blah, blah. And then you die. Or would you rather have a life that maybe is shorter, but maybe it's also the same length. Maybe it's even longer and it's a full one. And you're in tune, you're in flow. You are engaged with what's actually going on. You're not just kind of going with the market and money and what I need and I should and all that stuff. Um, one is a lot more comfortable than the other because it's what we've known. 
but I think it's atrophying and mm -hmm. I don't think there's enough reward at the end of the tunnel for it to be like as enticing as it used to be, you know, but in order to make the leap into the other one, you got to make that leap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true, brother. I was thinking the, the other day I, I've been practicing going outside as the sun is coming up and I prefer to watch the sunrise, but the sun doesn't really rise early enough where I live for me to be able to watch it without leaving the house. And I've got young children that I need to be present for in the morning. Um, and a, and a wife who doesn't sleep much because we she's caring for a very young baby. So I, I don't, I don't leave the house like I used to in the morning to go, uh, go watch the sunrise. But what I've started doing recently within the last two to three months is I'll come out to my deck and I will stand there and I'll listen to the birds sing as the sun comes up. Mm. And that idea of the birds celebrating literally every single morning, like they start singing and it's not just like somewhat subtle. It's like a cacophony, harmonious, beautiful orchestra of chaos back here of birds of every persuasion singing the blessings and the graces of the sun coming up once again. And it's a beautiful thing. And I know I've got I've got some friends who. Or may listen to this or are on right now that have told me in the past, I think Becca, you're probably one of those people who just do not like birds, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is that like, there is a beautiful celebration happening every morning with these birds singing in my backyard and every morning without fail, if the sun comes up and it's not raining, they're singing, they are singing every single day. And even when they're, when it's raining, as soon as that rain stops a little bit, they're back to singing again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Beck. I know this is true for you. I know you don't like birds. I know you're afraid of them, but like they're beautiful. The ones that poo on you, you know, it's a different conversation. Like they got a little bit of a different situation going on. Like they're beautiful in their own right. You got to read um, uh, jo John Livingston Siegel. He'll, he'll change your whole perspective. You know, read that book. It'll change your whole perspective about it. But it's a beautiful thing to witness the celebration of life that takes place every single morning. And I absolutely love it. Right. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. The other thing that came to mind for me when you were describing this idea of like doing things that aren't necessarily market driven or informed by commerce in some way, I went for a bike ride, uh, yesterday, the most inefficient use of time, right? Like I could have easily jumped in my car, drove, jumped in my car, drove again, jumped in my car, drove again. But I intentionally rode my bike from my house to my son's school to do animal care. It's about a two mile ride. Then I rode from my son's school to uh, my kickboxing class, which is about a six mile ride. Then I rode from the kickboxing class to the, to the rock climbing gym, which was close, not a big ride at all. Then I went from the rock climbing gym to Trader Joe's where I met my wife. We went grocery shopping together and then she took the groceries home and I rode my bike from Trader Joe's back home. Total 15 miles or so on the bike, right? Took me round trip about an hour and a half on bike, bike travel, right? It would have taken me maybe 25 minutes, 30 minutes at the most in my car inefficient use of time but the best thing yes but the best thing rua hit us with the air quotes for those of you listening the best thing about that situation was that i moved my body all day long in some way shape or form and it was the most nourishing day that i've had in a long time and i <laughs> got home and my butt was hurting and I was exhausted and my feet was tired and cramping and I sat down and I stretched my body and I loved on it and I drank a lot of water and I just hydrated up and just took care of myself and it was the most nourishing day because I opted for the thing that was inefficient quote unquote inefficient but it was so nourishing for my physical body because it's what it was calling me to do. And we've talked about this a number of times, right? Like I am an athlete and I say that word, not in the sense of I play a sport, but in the sense that my body wants to move. And the truth is that most of us on this planet who are able-bodied are, are athletes, right? And even those of us who are, are, are differently abled are athletes in another way, right? Like we're bo our bodies are meant to move. They're designed to move. 
And so that reality of our bodies wanting to move, desiring to move and giving it that nourishment that it desires was so satisfying in so many ways and was counter to what I could have done on a very, on a Sunday where I could have been efficient, productive and knocked out a whole bunch of things. And I'd still knocked about a bunch of stuff out physically speaking, but it's an interesting thing when you consider like, what does nature need as opposed to what does commerce need or what does the idea of productivity tell me to do? Right. What does nature need? I am a part of nature. I am part of. I'm not separate from. I am a being that is made of the same stuff that this earth is made of. I am not different from or different than. And so when I think about my biology and I align my practices, behaviors with what my biology needs, like waking up with the sun and singing its praises because, hey, here's another beautiful day where the sun is going to keep my body warm for another 23 hours and 50 some odd minutes because we ain't got 24 hours in a day, 23 hours and 50 some odd minutes according to the sun. And where I got to move my body because my body craves to move, where I've got to stretch, where I've got to nourish it well, where I have to hydrate it well, all these things are biological drivers. And when I appeal to that, I'm more likely to feel more fulfilled in all of the other things that I do. Right. But sometimes we have it backwards. I heard something recently, this idea of, um, you know, we, we go through this route of doing so that we can be something so that we can have something. Right. Or sometimes we do things so that we can have things and then we can be things. Right. But the truth is, if we start with being, we have everything and we can do whatever we want. Right. Or if we start with being, and from the beingness, we decide to do something, then the things that we have are more purpose driven. They're more informed and influenced by our desire to be a certain person in the world or a certain type of being in the world, which I thought was really fascinating. So going back to the whole thing, how does this tie into our biology? How does it tie into how we show up every day when we nourish our physical bodies first, when we nourish this, this specimen that is us? moving, drinking water, watching the sunset, celebrating, dancing. Dancing is your birthright, right? Like to move to rhythm. My daughter's 14 months old. I put some music on and she starts moving. Like she don't, she doesn't think about it. It's in her soul, right? It's in her body to be able to dance to rhythm. We probably were making music before we were speaking right? as, as, as hominids, right? It is core to our humanness to, to, to dance and to celebrate and to experience and to sing and to listen and to make and to make love and to play and all of these things. So it's just a reminder what I'm hearing from you and what I'm kind of reflecting back to you in so many ways is the reminder to sometimes put down the things that are man-made and focus more on the things that are man-needed, right? Focus on the things that our, our bodies are craving. Less about the attention. Dance is painful, yes, for sure. Looks like your God brother's here. <laughs> Love it. But doing the things that are nourishing to ourselves, to our bodies, to our physical bodies, to our spirit, to our emotional reality, and the rest of this stuff, it just kind of works itself out. You know, it works itself out. I got like 60 seconds, Rue. You got some some thoughts to wrap us up today? That was it, bro. That was beautiful. Appreciate you. Yeah, that was it. That was that was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, beautiful people, thank you for joining us for this Monday Musings. And for those who are listening in on the Between Two Breaths podcast, thank you for joining um, if you are watching the recording, thank you for taking a moment to hang out with us and listen to us riff on the eclipse, the solar eclipse. And Becca, thank you for your service today, for being our scribe and Google and resource checker. Appreciate you always. And um, yeah, the podcast does exist if you just search between two breaths. If you want to listen to it, I think we got like 15, 16 episodes, something like that. You'll find it wherever you listen to podcasts. And um, yeah, give us a little rating. Tell us how we did. And um, yeah, love you all. Appreciate you all. Take care. We'll see you soon, brother. Peace. Love you guys. Love you, brother. <laughs>